This video is based on the article, Five Mind-Blowing Technologies That the Government Will Use for Spying, that first appeared in the Corbett Report subscriber newsletter on February 20th, 2016. For access to the newsletter, please become a Corbett Report member at corbettreport.com support. Scientists and engineers can spend years of their lives in painstaking trial and error experimentation to develop a breakthrough new technology, and the military-industrial complex can find a way to militarize it in mere hours. Sadly, the military aren't the only ones interested in the latest gadgets and inventions, though. The alphabet soup agencies are equally voracious for innovative new ways to spy on the public. Today, let's examine five of the most amazing technological breakthroughs that are about to be turned into nightmarish spy tech. Number 5. The Visual Microphone As we all know, what we call sound is essentially a wave propagating through a medium like air, displacing particles, and causing oscillations in the pressure and velocity of those particles. These oscillations are detected by our ears and converted into nerve impulses that our brain interprets as sound. So what if you can't directly perceive that wave itself, but the effect of that wave on another subject? Could you reconstruct that sound just from seeing the effect of the sound wave? Well, let's not keep anybody in suspense here. The answer is yes. Yes, you can. In the silent high-speed video shown here on the left, we see the leaves of a potted plant shown on the right. The video was recorded while a nearby loudspeaker played the notes to Mary Had a Little Lamb. Even when we play the video in slow motion here, the vibrations caused by the music are so subtle that they move the plant's leaves by less than a hundredth of a pixel making the plant appear still to the naked eye. But by combining and filtering all of the tiny motion happening across the image that you see, we are able to recover this sound. This is a truly remarkable technology, and goes to show just how incredible the products of human ingenuity really are and just how advanced the spying capabilities of the intelligence agencies already are. If you think MIT researchers are working on technology like this without the full knowledge of the alphabet supers, you're not living in the real world. Even Crack.com, a humor website that derides conspiracy theories every chance it gets, knows precisely what this tech will be, is already being, used for. The researchers say they can do the same thing with a piece of foil or even a potted plant, which has far-reaching implications in the field of, well, spying on people. And probably other things, but mostly spying. Number 4. Backscatter Vans Remember those ridiculous x-ray specs they used to sell in the back of comic books? The ones that were guaranteed to help you see through solid objects? Somehow even 8-year-old you knew they were a bunch of hooey, even if you still joked with your friends about how you'd use them. Well, you can stop worrying about it. They were baloney, and you were right not to buy them. But you might be happy to hear that the technology to actually see through objects does exist now. Until you hear it was developed for the Department of Homeland Security. From the outside, the ZBV looks like an ordinary delivery van allowing it to blend in to urban and other landscapes. Yet, as it passes by cars, trucks, containers, and other objects, its unparalleled X-ray screening system provides photo-like images, detecting explosives, weapons, contraband, and stowaways. These images can be immediately analyzed by the operator seated in the ZBV's cab. Sound dangerous? It sure is. But are we really expecting the DHS to care whether or not they're sending random innocent people to an early grave when there's billions in federal funding for such technologies to burn through and cool spying tech like this to play with? Of course not. Number 3. Stingrays Back in November 2014, the story broke that the increasingly inaccurately named Department of Justice was sending up a fleet of Cessnas with devices that could mimic cell phone towers in order to collect communication data on criminal suspects. The devices, dubbed Stingrays by people who apparently think that the scheme isn't already Bond villain cartoonish enough, spoofed cell phones into giving up their identity and location data, and allowed the DOJ to scoop up the cell phone conversations and text messages of thousands of people per flight, all supposedly justified because they were looking for a handful of bad guys' data. Details are emerging about a tracking system used by the feds called Stingray. 
Now, it's similar to what Seguin described, but this device acts as if it were a cell phone tower, and it intercepts your phone's signals using pings. So the Stingray determines the strength of your cell phone signal through sonar technology. So your cell phone constantly sends out a signal, and based on how long it takes for the receptor, in this case, the Stingray to receive that signal, then your cell phone can easily be found, or the location of it. And the worst part here is that even if you're not using your phone to actually make a phone call, the feds can still find out exactly where you are. Sound like a clear violation of Fourth Amendment rights? Certainly is, but that didn't even cause the FBI to blink. Once the program was exposed, they simply declared, Warrants? We don't need no stinking warrants, or the legalese equivalent thereof, and continued on their merry cell phone spoofing way. Number 2. Tempest Don't let all this fancy spy tech fool you into thinking that the spy masters need physical access to you or your location at all in order to see and hear what you're doing. We're sadly well past that point. As described in a speech at the annual Chaos Communication Congress in 2013. Here's why they do it. This is an implant called Rage Master. It's part of the angry neighbor family of tools where they have a small device that they put in line with a cable in your monitor, and then they use this radar system to bounce a signal. This is not unlike the great seal bug that Lewis Theremin designed for the KGB. So it's good to know we finally caught up with the KGB, but um, now with computers. They send the microwave transmission, the continuous wave, it reflects off of this chip, and then they use this device to see your monitor. Yep. So there's the full life cycle. First they radiate you, then you die from cancer, then you win. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the same thing, but this time for keyboards, USB and PS2 keyboards. So the idea is that it's a data retro reflector. Here's another thing, but this one, the Tadri Yard program is a little bit different. It's a beacon. So this is where probably then they kill you with a drone. Even disregarding how utterly insane that sounds, is it safe? Won't that kind of RF energy being beamed directly into people cause cancer? Who knows? Who cares? As long as the eyes in the skies get their target data, who has time for such questions? Okay, this is all incredibly creepy. But what if you've already typed out your super secret love letter and the NSA wasn't able to intercept it in real time? What if they weren't able to spoof it out of your phone, or irradiate you so you glowed like a candle for their radars to scoop up every word? What if it's already a done deal, a fait accompli? Surely they can't get the info then, right? What are they gonna do, scoop it right out of your brain? Number 1. Mind Reader Essentially, yes, they are going to scoop the info out of your brain. As the International Business Times puts it, Scientists have created a mind-reading machine that allows them to reconstruct images in a person's mind using brain scans. Sound sensational? Well, it's not as far off the mark as such hyperbole might sound at first glance. In 2014, researchers at New York University and the University of California showed 300 pictures of faces to six test subjects who were undergoing fMRI scans in order to build up a database of how their brains reacted to facial data. They then showed them pictures of new faces and used the resulting fMRI data to reconstruct crude but recognizable versions of those faces. In other words, they read their mind and were able to pictorially represent what the subjects were looking at. Okay, okay, we get it, James, you're saying right now. They can see everything, read everything, hear everything. There is no escape. We might as well just give up. Absolutely not. It is important to understand and be knowledgeable about the types of technology that the police state has at its disposal. But let's keep in mind that the only perfect prison is the one that we create in our own minds. The one that stops us from acting out of fear that the jailers will see us. And more to the point, why should we take the alleged capabilities of these spy gadgets at face value? The alphabet soup agencies want people to believe they're omnipotent, so what's to stop them from lying about how advanced their technologies really are, and what they're really capable of? That's right. Nothing. For more on how the police state has relied for decades on unreliable or outright fraudulent technologies to convict innocent people, please see Four Ways the Crime Lab Can Frame You on CorporateReport.com.